Well, but right now joining us is a young man on the rise with TFC, TFC defender Mark Bloom. Mark, welcome to Red Card, my friend. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Mark, let's talk about that. A tough loss, but I got to tell you, a gutsy effort by your team. A lot of guys out with injuries, Jermaine Defoe, Michael Bradley, on and on and on, and then d Row went in late in the game. You guys hit a couple posts with Kyle Becker. It had to be said, I'm pretty sure, at halftime that, uh, by Coach Ryan Nelson to keep pushing because you had him on the ropes. Yeah, obviously going into a game with a lot of injuries. Um, you know, I wouldn't call it a makeshift lineup, but, you know, guys had to, had to step in and do a good job. And, um, you know, we trust those guys to do well, um, to step in when they're called upon. And like you said, it was a, it was a tough game. We had our chances. Um, we feel like we had the better of the play, but obviously they got one goal, and sometimes that's the difference. Mark, let's talk about that word you just used, trust. And when I see Caldwell and I see Orr and Daniil Henry, when he's out there with yourself, there's a trust. There's a chemistry that I haven't seen with this team ever. I got to be honest, especially on that back end. It looks like you guys have a synergy. You're working for one another and you give it all you've got each and every second out there. Talk about that synergy. Talk about that trust. Well, I believe uh, you said it best when we do trust each other, um, and I think that's the most important thing about it. Um, we believe in each other's abilities. We uh, we know that when one guy makes mistakes, we all have to rise to the occasion and fix that mistake and step in for him. So um, you know, we don't we don't take it lightly, and uh, I think communication is a huge key as well. With uh, Stephen Caldwell, Bradley Orr, Daniel Henry back there, you know that they make sure that everyone's on the same page and everybody's working together and. Obviously, the most important thing as a defense is to work as a unit and not as individuals. So as we continue to work as a unit, it's going to be tough for teams to break us down. You've got to feel relaxed and you've got to also feel confident. Looking behind you, a world-class goalie, a guy that will be wearing the Brazil colors in just a few months in Julio Cesar. How great is it to have, uh, I would call him the commander-in-chief right there all the way out? Yeah, obviously. Obviously, Julio back there is a uh, you know is, a, is another safety net. Um, you know, obviously we can't you can't just rely on a keeper to win you games uh, to keep you in games. It's a whole team defensive effort. Um, but like you said, it's it's comforting knowing that Julio is back there and knowing that he's going to come up big when he's called upon. There's a different brand of game that TFC has played this year that I've never seen before as well. It's a more uh, uh, relaxed, confident game. The ball is being distributed, Mark. Uh, you guys are understanding one each, uh, each other early on, where I thought early on you guys would struggle because there's too many new faces. That has been the opposite, where you guys have clicked and connected with one another. Has that been something that you guys have talked about away from the pitch quite a bit, games and, and situations to really understand each other when it's game time? Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, I think we first said it at the beginning of the season, we know it's a new team. Um, but first and foremost, we got to learn how to win. Um, not everything is going to go our way, especially at the beginning of the season. And there are going to be games that we're going to have to grind out. And I think you saw that um, in the Seattle game and, uh, second half of the Columbus game as well. Um, but like you said, we're getting better and better each and every day, um, each and every game. And so as we continue on, as we continue to win, um, we're only going to get stronger. Um, we're only going to learn to play together. Mark, let's be honest, though. The target is on TFC from all over the league and fans of different teams with the signing of Jermaine Defoe, Michael Bradley, Julio Cesar, and d -Row. Teams are gunning for you. And obviously you guys in that locker room understand that, know that, and you've got to come out right away or else, uh, you know, it could get ugly. Right. I mean, Brian Nelson has definitely reinforced that, uh, that same statement. Um, and it's definitely key, key for us um, to, to, under, to know and understand that because uh, last year there wasn't this expectation to win, but this year there's an expectation to win not only from us, but the fans and even other teams. So, like you said, we have a big target on our back, and um, we have to be prepared. Let's talk about FC Dallas coming up in a couple days' time. This is a team right now, Mark. I don't need to tell you or the rest of your team that is firing on all cylinders. They look real, real good right now. 
How is Coach Nelson prepared uh, you guys for FC Dallas? Is it more of a defensive shell? Did you want guys want to go into this game, or do you still want to play your system that you've played all along? Well, you, you definitely have to go in and uh, give them credit where it's due um, and how effective they've been playing and how well they've been playing. But ultimately, uh, Ryan Nelson lets us know how they play. Um, just so we know and so we're prepared, but that doesn't mean that we go and change our game. We um, we play the same defensive game, um, you know, keep our lines tight defensively, and then when we win the ball, we can attack with pace. So, um, so I think we I think we're ready in that sense, and uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna be on our heels just because we're playing it good for him. Mark, as a defender, let me ask you your opinion on playing on different surfaces. Obviously, the beautiful grass, a surface at BMO and some other uh, stadiums out there in MLS, but then you get the Seattle facility, which for my money is not one of the best in MLS. So I would put it one at the bottom. Uh, how do you, as a defender, prepare for that? Because the bounce of the ball is going to be different, the wear and tear. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, I think uh, it's pretty unanimous throughout the league and throughout soccer in general that people prefer playing on grass to turf, um, but you do have to realize that playing on turf, it, it becomes a different game, and so that's kind of what I talked about earlier as far as uh, being willing to grind out games. So in this uh, Seattle game, uh, the ball wasn't going to sit. It's going to be very bouncy. It's going to be very fast-paced, so um, you have to adjust to that. Um, and you just have to be smart, and I think our players are, are smart enough and talented, talented enough to, uh, um, to understand that and get the job done on any surface. Mark, the Panamanian from FC Dallas, Blas Perez, obviously, uh, I'm pretty sure, is going to want to run havoc all over the TFC defense. Are you guys obviously have circled his name, along with another guy that's had a, star, a solid start, Mauro Diaz? Yeah, absolutely, and uh, we talked about them today and talked about our shape and uh, kind of talked about what they're going to do and how they play. Um, obviously, um, they're going to be key to their offense. We know that um, they like to attack uh, the attack with pace, and um, they have that create creativity to um, wreak havoc as well. So uh, we definitely have to be prepared and be focused on them. Mark, let me get your thoughts on what an exciting uh, week it has been in the state of Georgia. Obviously, the newest franchise coming in uh, to MLS being granted to the city of Atlanta. I think this is going to be a success. Uh, I know the Georgia area very little, but I know that it is a hotbed for grassroots youth soccer. Talk a little bit about MLS coming to Atlanta. Yeah, absolutely. For, it, for Atlanta being my hometown, I'm ecstatic to have the MLS come to Atlanta. Obviously, uh, grow up playing the game um, in Atlanta. I know, I know what kind of um, hotbed it is for soccer, and I know the the hype around the the team and uh, what it's going to be like. So, um, I know they're going to do it, and they're going to do it right. And so, I think uh, I think a lot of people are going to get behind it. And it's going to be very successful. Let's talk about your journey to get to TFC today, and, and, and it's a great journey, a wonderful journey, something that I think a lot of youngsters uh, should look up and say, hey, I want to be like Mark Bloom one day and get to MLS with whichever club. Uh, you know, you played at Barry College, you played in the North American Soccer League with the Silverbacks. Tell us a little bit about that journey and some of the ups and downs. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, uh, it's not the easiest journey to the MLS, and at times it's very frustrating and difficult. Um, obviously, not going to a huge college, you're not you're not highly recruited out of uh, out of college into professional ranks. So, yeah, I had to get my start in the NASL, and uh, going into the NASL, I figured that it'd be a pretty quick and easy jump to the MLS if I played well, played consistent. Um, but that's not necessarily the case, and um, I think my case is pretty rare, making that being able to make that jump to the MLS. But um, I always knew that I was good enough, and uh, I was confident in my game. And so when I finally did get the chance, I wasn't going to waste it. Mark, let's talk about uh, the North American Soccer League. Obviously, you played in there a bit. Uh, there's a lot of teams coming into that league right now. Is it a league that is is a league that, in your mind, could be a starting point for a youngster uh, that maybe isn't right now ready for MLS to get that experience to make the jump in a couple of years' time? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I would never, um, 
discount the quality in the NASL. I know there are plenty of guys, plenty of talented guys who are able to make that jump to the MLS. You know, hopefully my story is a testament to the sort of quality that is in that league, and I really hope that um, it opens eyes um, of teams from the MLS to recruit from the NASL, but also to to kind of maybe send young players down there um, as, as they're doing in the USL because it, it's a great league, um, especially for young players to develop because there is a lot of quality. And, uh, you know, the young guys, they need minutes and they need uh, the experience. And that's very key that you mentioned. They need minutes and they need time to develop. Mark, you mentioned something there early on about frustration and maybe having doubts in your mind, and finally you've reached the show on MLS, and I'm pretty sure you're going to last a very long time in this league. So when you were going through some of these doubts and frustration, did you reach out to a former coach, a parent, someone? I mean, tell us, because there's a lot of young men out there that are in your situation, whether in North American Soccer League or maybe in a second and third division in Europe, that they themselves are, are thinking, am I ever going to get out of this? Yeah, absolutely. I think my biggest refuge is, was in my uh, fellow teammates um, that kind of shared the same frustrations, you know. Uh, we would discuss it um, day in and day out about um, the difficulties in being in the, in the NASL, being in the lower leagues. Obviously, it's hard to complain being playing soccer for money, but when you're when you're starting to get older, you know you're starting to think about a family. You're starting to think about saving money. You're starting to think about all these things that come with life, and you kind of wonder if soccer is gonna, you know, how long soccer can pay the bills for, and and uh, how long you can really do this for, you know, if you're not making a good uh, a good amount of money. So um, the the frustration is real among everyone, you know, um, and it's it's difficult. You know, you you only get paid. While you're in season, so when you're out of season, you gotta you gotta figure out something to do. So um, it's constantly in the back of your mind, um, trying to trying to figure out how to how to make ends meet. And for some people, uh, you can't do that for too long, and, and it's really tough, and it takes a toll. So um, yeah, just being able to discuss that with fellow teammates is is huge, and not necessarily to complain, but um, you know to to make sure someone understands you and understands your struggle. Well, I'll tell you what, Mark. I'll do some of the complaining, not for you, but for a lot of players in MLS. I saw the MLS salaries come out again this past week. I've followed the MLS since day one. I know what their salaries are. I'll never forget a former TFC a player many, many years ago that lived and resided here in the city of Toronto was making, if I'm not mistaken, 17 or 18K a year, taking the bus, living with his parents to the game. To me... With all due respect to all the GMs and MLS clubs uh, around the league, I believe the starting salary for any player, minimum, should be at least at 75 k and work its way up. And I know it's not that, and I think the union really has to address this. Oh, yeah. I mean, I totally agree. Um, but you got to look at where the league was, obviously. Uh, you mentioned 17 k a year. Um, Obviously, the minimum has jumped up, and, and the, the league is really still in its infancy, and it's still growing, it's still maturing, um, and these, these issues are being addressed. Um, maybe not as quickly as we would uh, like, but they are being addressed, and they are being changed. Um, and so, obviously, with a new CBA coming, coming up this next year, um, I think we will see positive changes, maybe not the, the jump that we, um, we expect or maybe deserve, but I, you will see changes, and it will grow, and it will develop, and it will get better. 